Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of similarity. But before we begin with that, I want to talk a little bit about your scale models. So today I'm going through the models that I didn't get through over the weekend, and I'm just approving whether or not the pictures that you picked will work well for a model. Now some of the pictures that have approval might be quite hard to do, so you still have an option of changing it out. Just keep in mind that if you pick a very simple scale model, like a very, very basic, almost childish house sort of thing, I will require more details to be drawn in. I do encourage you to challenge yourself. Now with this, the other thing to keep in mind is you need to be thinking today about what material you're going to use to build your scale model. Tomorrow is pickup day at Covenant, and I will have available for you poster board to work with. You can take up to two poster boards, though see if you can do it with one. And um, with these poster boards, what you are going to do is just build your actual structure. So you'll be cutting out the sides, you'll be cutting out the roof, you'll be putting it all together with any materials at hand. You do not need to use poster board. I've had people use cardboard in the past, like, you know, all those Amazon boxes that some people have been ordering, put them to good use, make a structure out of it. Or people have built it out of wood. You can go crazy, pick whatever material you would like to work with. But the poster board will be available for you. Please let me know if you think that you're going to need more than two pieces, but really you can make these models quite small still. So let's set that aside then. Tomorrow, just keep that in mind. You do need to pick up poster board. If it turns out you need more, you can always let me know. And what we are going to do then is look at the fundamental theorem of similarity. So with the fundamental theorem of similarity, what we're going to talk about is how does the scale factor change if we're talking about length, the area of a figure, or volume of a figure? Okay, so let's think about length. We actually already know how length is related. So here, if we're told that we have similar figures F and F prime, remember that little squiggle means similar, and there's a scale factor of K, so we're just gonna call our size change there K, how are each of these related? Well, we know with length, what you're going to do is you're going to take the pre-image any length in the preimage, you're going to multiply it by just your size change k, and you're going to get as a result the length in the final image. So we have p times k equals f, and that means something like this. If you started out with this length, you'd multiply it by k, and you'd end up with something that is the original length, maybe doubled if k is doubled. So it just kind of changes that that way. Now with area things are slightly different. In fact you might already recognize this or know this pattern just based on how we've done things in the past. Think unit conversions. When we changed units really what you're kind of doing is you're splitting things differently. It's, it's very similar to size change. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that original area which is now two-dimensional and we're going to be changing it not just in one dimension, but we're going to be changing it in two dimensions. That means that when I multiply by my size change, I can't just multiply by my size change. I need to multiply by my size change squared because I need to change it not just in one dimension, but in two dimensions. And that will give me my new final area. So, here, keep in mind that this is going to affect it in multiple dimensions, which is why we need this k to be multiplying it twice, because you can see it's changing here and here. Now, that leaves us to volume, and I'm pretty sure you can guess what's going to happen here. I'm going to take my original volume. I'm going to multiply it by k, only this time I'm going to multiply it by k to the, well, you guessed it, third power because I'm going to be multiplying in three dimensions. So each one of these then in my three-dimensional figure will get multiplied by a k. So you can draw a representation of that if you'd like. It kind of is nice to keep in mind like why this is happening. It's happening because we do need it to change not just once but in every single direction. So we end up with this new figure that has changed in three dimensions. 
And that's really how I always remember it. When you're doing this, I want you guys to pay attention to three steps. The first thing that you need to do is you need to recognize what dimension they give you. Because there's going to be a lot of them. They can start by giving you a K to the third if we're talking about the relation of volumes. The next thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find K. Don't try to jump from K to cube to K um, squared. You have to go back to K. And then you can then use your K each time. Or your K squared, K cubed. So let's just kind of see how this works. How this works. Triangle ABC was expanded to form a new triangle DEF. Find the ratio of similitude between the two triangles perimeter and then area. So when I'm trying to find this first perimeter I know is a length. I can measure it with a tape measure. And here, that means that I'm going to be using just k. I don't have k squared, I just have k. So let's find that k value just like I normally would. Here I need to find some corresponding lengths, and I can see that 6 and 12 correspond to each other. So I just need to know which is my pre-image and which is my image. Well, DEF is my final image, and ABC is my pre-image. And don't forget that we can find K by doing our final image over our pre-image. So that means in this case, I'm taking my 12 over my 6 to get 2. So K is equal to 2. That means that the ratio of similitudes between the two triangles perimeter is going to be my original, my pre-image, 2, to my final image of 1. And it does want a ratio of similitude here, so you're going to put like k up here to 1 over here. Um, with area, all I need to do is, well, hey, if I'm looking at area, what I'm doing is I'm going to square my k. And here, with a ratio, what you're going to do is you're going to take that normal k, square it. So k is squared will be my area, which is 2 squared, or 4. And if I want to write that as a ratio of similitude, all I need to do is set it as 4 to 1. So these are our two answers then. Notice area, second dimension, it is squared. One thing to keep in mind is if they give us volume, you're just going to go back to k, take that k, which is 2, cube it, and got 8, so we'd have an 8 to 1 volume. But um, one other thing to watch out for, let's say I did give you a ratio of similitude. Let's say that in this entirely separate problem, I told you that the ratio of similitude was 3 to 2 for length. What would that be in volume? Well, if that's the case, what going to end up happening is you end up cubing it. Now since we have a ratio here, not just a k, you're going to cube both of those. So you'd get 3 cubed to 2 cubed would end up being your volume. And you could of course simplify that. Alright, so let's look at one more at least today and then we'll pick up from here tomorrow. In this one, what we're looking at is two figures, where AB has a length of 11, VW is 5. If VW XYZ has an area of 20 square units, what is the area of the other figure? So we know that the area of this one is equal to 20. And we know that AB here is 11 and VW is 5. Well, what this is asking us to do is essentially find what dimensions we have corresponding things in. Since I have two corresponding lengths, that means I'm going to be able to find k, because k is going to be equal to my final image over my pre-image length, right? And you got to watch out, this is length here. 
So I'm going to fill those in. I've got 11 over my final image, let's see, is going to be, well, it doesn't tell us, so we're just going to have to guess in this case. I'm going to say that this is my final image and this is my pre-image, but you can pick whatever one that you want. So I'm going to get 11 over 5 which gives us a very nice ratio of similitude, but I'd rather have that as a decimal, so I'm just going to give divide those two to get my 2.2 for my k. And again, just double check, we're in the first dimension with a length, so we have a normal k, I don't need to square it, cube it, or anything else. My next thing is what then will my new area be if my original was 20. Well, we know that normally what we're going to do for area is we're going to take our p times our k squared to get our final image. So notice I have my formula laid out for area. I know that my k is 2.2, so I can fill in my 2.2 and square it, because I'm in the second dimension, and now I just need to figure out, is the 20 talking about my P or my F? And since it's referring to my pre-image, I've labeled it P, I can then do 20 over here, and that will give me my F. Now again, I could have, by the way, swapped the pre-image and, and final image. This K value will be different, and then the 20 will be over here. Just be careful what you label things and stay consistent. If you stay consistent, you will get the same answer. So you can even test me on that, go ahead and try it out if you'd like. But this will end up giving you an answer of 96.8. So don't forget to square that K value. And we don't know the units here, but we can just say units squared because we are talking about area. So of course it is going to be in square units. That is it for today. I have a couple questions for you to answer on this Ed puzzle, but that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.